In this tutorial, we're going to do a couple of minor tasks um, and have some fun with uh, image fills uh, for a new layer. The only layer that I'm going to use here is uh, some coastlines from Natural Earth. And I've also downloaded some of the SVGs for an open set of emojis, which uh, I'll use to fill in uh, one of the layers just for fun. So I'm going to drag in the coastline data. And I'm going to use the British National Grid for my coordinate reference system and for the projection here. Um, and then I want you to imagine that uh, Scotland has uh, been invaded by some zombies. Uh, and we want to show uh, the extent of the invasion so far. Uh, I'm going to first just style the coastline a little bit. Make it a little larger. And I'm going to create a new shape file for our zombie invasion. And the first thing I wanted to show is uh, when you're creating a new shape, let's say you're tracing some um, something from a, a historical map that you've geo-referenced uh, underneath uh, the current layer, um, then one handy thing to have when you want your shapes to conform to a coastline is to use this uh, magnet thing that comes from the snapping toolbar if you right-click and make sure that your snapping toolbar is visible. If you click that on and you choose the tracing tool here. And from here, you choose advanced configuration and select the layer that you want this to snap to. Uh, we can now easily make shapes that will snap to the coastline. So I'm going to add a polygon feature. And you'll notice that as I move the cursor over the coastline, it gives me a little snapping guideline. So if I click on that, and now I'm going to show the extent of the zombie invasion. I'm just selecting various points along the coast here. backspace to cancel the last click. And then when I'm done, I right click and press OK. So there we have um, our zombie invasion. I'm going to save that and close the editing for this. Uh, and now I'm going to create a layer that shows the distribution of fairies in Scotland. So I'm going to create a new shape layer. I'm going to call it uh, the fairy layer. This will also be a uh, polygon. And uh, let's again create a new polygon here, add polygon feature. And we're going to give fairies uh, a wide uh, area of, of Scotland, but overlaying over matching our um, Scottish countryside here on the west, overlapping with the zombie area. So as you can see, this is a, a very convenient way to fill up a significant part of an area while following um, a coastline layer, for example, underneath it. So if I save that and close the editing, I don't think the fairies should be orange. So let's make them some kind of a blue color. Um, 
And if I make that uh, a little less transparent or a little, little less opaque, uh, you'll see that we have an area of the map where the zombies and the fairies overlap. I'm going to add one more layer, uh, and I'm going to call this the Tengu layer for the infestation of Japanese uh, goblins that I'm going to say has happened in Scotland. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to create a new polygon layer, open polygon feature. And let's say that uh, the Tengu have decided to stay within this central area here. OK, so now we have an area with the Japanese Tengu, an area with fairies, and an area with zombies. So that's the first task. How do you draw a shape but have it conform along uh, the coastline? Save this and close the editing. Um, next task to show you is uh, if instead of these simple color fills, we wanted to fill uh, these with um, an image instead. Um, it's not going to look that great in our case, but there are some examples where uh, you might want to, to do this uh, for just one. Uh, so I'm going to step you through the process of, of how to do that. I don't like the fact that the borders of our fairy zone are very straight. Um, so instead of a simple fill, I'm going to first add something called a geometry generator. And uh, this will allow you to place the geometry of your polygon within a smooth function. I've said, take the geometry of our shape smooth it at a level of 2. And if I apply that, you'll see that my shape is now we've got a more smooth, round kind of look to it. Uh, then I can go down. You can have multiple layers of symbology here. And instead of a simple fill, I'm going to change this to an SVG fill. Uh, and we're going to fill it with the icon uh, of an open emoji version of the fairies. And I'll make it 50 pixels in size. And then I'm going to choose my fairy image that I've downloaded from Wikipedia Commons. And if I apply that, it doesn't seem to show. I've had some problems with. Sometimes I have to select the fairy image twice. OK, so uh, now I've added uh, a, an SVG fill for this layer, showing this little repeated background uh, for the fairy zone. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing for the Tengu zone. I'm also going to smooth that with a geometry generator. And then notice that our shape has gotten a lot smoother. And instead of simple fill, I'm going to do SVG fill at a size of 50 pixels. And I'm going to choose my Tengu emoji. And Again, for some reason, the first time I choose SVG fill, it doesn't work. Uh, so I'm going to try it again. I'm wondering if the first time fifty pixels. Okay, and now I have a Tengu fill. Let's turn off our fairies for a second. And uh, let's do the same thing for the zombies. Um, I'm going to right click properties. Uh, and again, I'm going to change this to a geometry generator. I'm, I'm going to smooth the exterior of it. And 
And instead of a simple fill, let's do an SVG fill. And I'm going to choose my zombie SVG file. Again, it looks like I have to do it twice for some reason. I think it might help if you save your SVG symbols directly into um, an area here. Okay, I'm not sure why it worked that last time and not the first time. So uh, obviously not very aesthetically pleasing if we turn these all on, um, but um, at least you get the idea of how you could use uh, an image um, as a kind of a fill background. Um, you can do some fun things with textures uh, uh, or uh, other kinds of patterns and make them less or more opaque. but. I think you can see that there is an area of our map here where there are fairies, zombies, and Tengu. So now let's practice uh, some of the vector geoprocessing tools uh, on these layers here. Let's imagine uh, a situation in which we would like uh, to live in an area where we can watch uh, the fairies interact with the Tengu goblins uh, and see uh, uh, what's going on there. Uh, this is a good case for clip. Uh, think of the clip as uh, using, uh, if you've got a big rolled out piece of dough and you're using a cookie clipper and you just want to keep the 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 uh, thing inside of the cookie cutter. So if I do clip, choose my fairy layer, and choose the Tengu layer, it's now going to save just, it's going to create a new layer that shows you just the area that they have in common. If I get rid of zombies for a second, you'll see that we have a colored layer in this overlap here. Okay. If I then wanted to uh, find out what portion of this, which has both fairies and Tengu, also has zombies, I can do another clip, this time on the already clipped layer, and on the zombies. And now we have the location in Scotland, which has uh, all these monsters, uh, all these creatures uh, in that area. Okay, now imagine uh, a case in which we would like to live in an area that's inhabited by fairies, uh, but not pestered by the presence of uh, these Tengu uh, or zombies. So we would like to live in a an area with the with, uh, supernatural creatures, but only the fairies. This is a good case uh, for the use of um, difference. So if we choose difference here, so I choose my fairy layer, and I would like to capture the difference with the Tengu area, and I run that in the background. Notice the green here covers the fairy area, but not the fairy and Tengu area. So I'm going to hide that. And uh, now we have a situation where there's actually one of those areas uh, that's also infested by zombies. So we could run another difference between the generated difference area and the zombie layer. 
Notice that the newly created layer now excludes this fairy zombie zone over here in this area. So the things we've practiced here is drawing shapes with the tracer, uh, using an image fill, using a geometry generator to smooth things out. Uh, incidentally, I can now go into the properties and change this to a geometry generator and do a smooth on our... Keep in mind that the smooth only gives the appearance of having smoothed things out. As you saw when we performed various functions on these layers, it still uses the original underlying geometry to perform any calculations. And we're just seeing a kind of a layer styling, uh, a, a the visual uh, illusion of those uh, borders being smoothed out, uh, which uh, is useful for aesthetic uh, output of a map, for example. And then the last thing we did is we practiced clip, uh, which shows you just the area that two layers have in common. Um, difference, which shows you um, a layer minus an area that uh, it overlaps with another layer. And uh, we could have easily done some of the others, such as symmetrical difference. In fact, let's do that right now. If we take a look at this, and let's say we wanted to have, we're happy to live in a fairy area, and we're happy to live in a tengu area, but we don't want to live in an area where these two uh, uh, live together. So if we go up to symmetrical difference, a fairy area, the Tengu area, and you'll see that we now have captured that uh, uh, those areas of Scotland, um, which do not have uh, uh, multiple of these populations living together in the case of fairies and Tengus.